Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. How are y'all doing? Whew. Woke up with a headache this morning. It's kind of making me tired. Ugh. It's right in the back of my neck, too. Oh, oh time to take some medicine. All right. Um, I've had people ask me, how do I know I'm living in the Spirit? I don't know I'm walking in the Spirit. And I've heard several other people give different answers. But the one the Bible gives is the clearest one. Do you have peace? And if you have peace, then you know you're walking in the Spirit. See, the flesh brings fear. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the flesh brings worry. The flesh brings uh, obsessing over things. The flesh brings distrust. All those negative things all come from the flesh. So if you have those things, there's somewhere in your life you're walking after the flesh. I know. I, I go through it too. That perfect peace is achieved when you start to eliminate those areas in your life that are going after the flesh. And instead, you're walking after the Spirit. Now people keep going through these, get these ideas, and they've let other people teach them this, that uh, it's some mystical change in your life, you're going to see sparkles and rainbows, um, you're going to be hearing angels singing, all these things. That's how you know you're walking in the Spirit. That's not what the Bible says. It's not what the Bible says because none of those men in the Bible ever experienced any of that. That's satisfying the flesh. The way I know I'm walking in the, in the Spirit, the, the way I know I have peace is, first of all, I have peace. One of the ways, and this is the most extreme one, is you look forward to death. You look forward to dying because you don't want to be here anymore and you know this isn't your home. Your desire is to go home. Paul, he expressed that quite clearly. To die is better. To live is good. To die is gain. Because when I live, I live for the Lord. And when I die, I go to be with the Lord. When you understand what that means and, and your desire is, I'd rather go. Your fear of death is gone. Your fear of what comes is gone. Because no matter what, it's a win-win. I'm either here doing videos and, and serving the Lord in the fashion that I can. I'm out in the world serving him, talking about him, or I go home. It's only two options. Now, the people that are living in the world, the people that are unsaved, they have two options also. They do their thing. They live for themselves. They have fun in this short life, the short, short, short life. And then they go on to an eternity of torment. If you want to know you're walking in the Spirit, read the Bible. It's in there. And it all starts with a simple word search. Because people, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Well, in my videos, I give you references on where to begin on that, those kinds of things. <coughs> but it's simple as downloading eSword on your computer. Oh, excuse me. Onto your computer. And in the little search area with the binoculars, type in peace and start studying peace look at the scriptures that come up if you don't have a computer you don't have a sword you can just do a google search you can get my sword as a phone app there's a hundred ways to do it and you do you search the word peace and you start going through the individual scriptures that come up you can google how many scriptures in the bible have the word peace in them and you'll, you'll find a list it'll be enough to get you started and then you go through and you look at what those scriptures are pertaining to, and all of a sudden, you'll 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 start you'll find scriptures that don't ma don't match or don't matter what your to your situation. They're not germane to your situation, but every, all of a sudden you'll start hitting them that directly speak to you. That's God speaking to you. When that verse becomes very relevant for your issue, that's God speaking to you. He the Holy Spirit is highlighting that verse. Hey, look, this is the, the help for your problem.
Hey, look, this one's talking to you. You do a word study on the word flesh. Do a word study on the word godly. On and on and on. Any word, just pick a pick a word and start doing a word study on there. It will lead you, because it's like branches. It'll lead you down a down hundred different avenues of, of research. And when you start digging into that, you start finding these verses. And then you open up the Bible and look at that verse in context. Five verses abo above, five verses below. Then you really start to grasp what he's talking about. It starts to open up your understanding. <clears throat> and then you are amazed at where you're walking in life. And what you'll start to realize is as you dig into that, because it's fun, as you start to pour through that, as you start to get deeper into that, all of a sudden you realize you're walking in the Spirit. The very act of getting into the Bible, reading it, and studying it is walking after the Spirit. Making Him the, the primary thought of your day is walking in the Spirit. Thinking to yourself, every time you go to do something, I wonder what the Lord thinks about this. That's walking in the Spirit. When you achieve that, you walk in peace. Because when you're walking in the Spirit, you're, you're fulfilling God's will. You're honoring Him. And you're standing in His presence. It's hard to do. Don't let, don't let me sugarcoat this. It's hard. It's hard to detach from this world. That's why I still have a cell phone in my hand. But I'm just about to the point where I'm going to turn this thing off and never turn it on again. I'm that way with my laptop, too. I'm getting to where I don't... My desire now is to not have these electronic devices. Delete all my accounts that I have online. And be done with it. But right now, this is a must-need situation. Right now, this is what I have to do. But I tell you what, if the Lord lets me off and he says, you're done, your ministry's finished, you will never see or hear from me again because I will shut all this stuff off. <clears throat> because this has been how Satan has drawn people into the lives that they have where they have no peace, where they're constantly, constantly constantly online searching for validation that's all social media is is a tool to find validation you want to be validated go to god get validated eternally he doesn't see us as a crowd he sees us as individual specifically designed people and he deals with each one of us individually specifically according to our design according to how we are designed. If you hear buzzing in the background, it's because there's some bees making a little nest in the wall back here. I gotta go out and spray it. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's bugging me. So if you want that peace, if you're looking for that peace and you're wondering why you don't have it in your lives, make sure you're not correlating peace with the regular everyday tribulation you're going to go through as a Christian. That's normal. The Bible said, you want to live godly? You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have problems. Your life is going to suck. Let's just be as blunt as we can. You're not going to have a, this amazing life. But what you will have, because you chose him instead of the world, is peace about it. You'll, you'll live in a world that hates you. You'll live around people that hate you. You'll live in an environment that is not pleasing to live in. But you will be at peace about it. 
See, the peace comes from God in that you're peaceful in the situation you're in, not that he delivers you from the situation you're in. We keep getting this idea in our head that once we become a Christian, God's going to heal everything I got wrong with my body. I'm going to be a perfect example of a human being. I'm going to be in perfect shape and trim and muscular and, and sexy and good looking. And I'm going to be able to wear those tight clothes again. And, and I'm not going to have any pain anymore. And no one's ever going to hate me anymore. And everybody's going to like me. And I'm going to be accepted. And that's what people go for. Validation. And they don't realize nothing about salvation is involving saving the flesh. Now, there are passages that talk about that. But that's secondary to the saving of the spirit. Because you are not a flesh being, you are a spirit being. What dwells inside you is far greater than the flesh it dwells within. The flesh is merely the vessel we carry now. Pretty soon we're going to slough that off. It'll be a brand new body. We're not meant to be happy in this world. No Christian is. Yet that's what you hear them tell you. Your best life now. Great. Have your best life now because for eternity you're not going to have one. I don't want my best life now. I'm happy with being in pain. I'm not happy about it because I don't like it because I'm in a lot of pain right now. But I'm happy being in pain. And I'm content with living where I'm living. I'm happy right here where I'm at. And I'm at peace with it. Because I understand there's something greater waiting I understand there's something better right around the corner. I understand that at any day, one of two things is going to happen. Any day, the Lord is going to call me home. And my life will end here. And I will stand in his presence the very next second after that. Or the rapture of his church will happen. And I'll go and I'll meet my Lord in the air. Either way, it's a win-win. There is no losing. So I live every day as that day. Every morning I get up, it's a new, brand new day. It's a new day to move forward. You ever notice how the days seem to just run together and you're like, oh, another day. And you start looking down the road and you're like, oh, here comes the weekend. Try, try short, being very short-sighted and just look one day at a time. What am I going to do today? But you don't think about that yesterday. You think about it the day you wake up. What am I going to do today? And where are those opportunities going to come where I can speak about the Lord to somebody? Even if it's just a, a couple of words. Where is he going to lead me today? What inspiration is he going to give me today? To read or to do a video on? Or where am I going to end up? And what you find is you end up being a bright shining light. In a dark and dying world. That's peace. That's walking in the spirit. If you're looking for sparkles and rainbows, you're not going to find them. If you're looking for this gloriously wonderful experience where your whole body tingles, you're not going to find it. What you're going to find is truth. Real truth. And every time you make a discovery... In that, in his truth, you will feel exhilaration and excitement because he showed you more and you realize he's active in your life. And that peace will grow more and more. I live, I can tell you personal experience. I'm going to use myself as an example. I live every minute of every day in pain, most of the time excruciating pain. I've gotten to the point where I'm so used to pain, I don't feel other pain. I'm in so much pain now. We were putting up some dog, some fence out here for our dogs. And I was helping my wife and the little sharp ends. Because I didn't use a flat cutter. I used a uh, side cutter. The little sharp ends of the fencing were poking me in the legs. I've got blood spots all over my legs where the, the fence was stabbing me. And my wife's jumping up and down. Ow, ow, ow. Like what? She goes, look at your legs. She goes, it's poking me and it kills me. How are you not feeling that? I spend most so much time of my life in so much pain. I don't feel normal pain anymore. My pain tolerance has gone way up. 
those internal pains, those muscle pains, and the headache I have now. I know people who have been worse than this and have given up. I know people who have had less pain than this and have given up. But even in this condition, even with all the distractions, because sometimes I have to do things to distract myself from the pain. It's one of the reasons why I play uh, Minecraft by myself. The building helps distract me from the pain. But... I still have peace. I get up. I have a regimen I have to do every morning. It takes about an hour at least. I start my day. And I wait and see what's going to happen. And I go where the Lord leads me. I wait for him to give me that push to say, go do this. Okay. Like that video yesterday. I wasn't looking for that. I came up in my ad feed. Um, on, my, on my regular video feed on YouTube. No matter what happens. No matter what goes on, we have peace. And it's not because of anything we do. It's because of God's providence. It's because we know we're saved. We know that this world is temporary. We know this life is temporary. And we know that the minute it ends, we stand in His presence. We're going to see family members. We're going to see friends. We're going to see all those that went before us. Because they're all standing there waiting to come back. To see us and get their new bodies. All of creation is waiting for that day. It's in the Bible. All of creation is is living in operating in anticipation of the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. Because when we're revealed, everything changes. Redemption comes. Redemption isn't here yet. Redemption comes. And everything will go back to the way it's supposed to be. And the Bible says all of creation is waiting for this. Because all of creation was subject to this um, destruction unwillingly. But something amazing is about to happen. And I live in peace knowing that. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be alive to see it. I don't know if any of us will be alive to see it. I don't know. I can't say that I know. I'm just looking at what the Bible says and looking at what's going on in the world and go, well, looks like it's close. I look at the scriptures that tell me when to look. But I also look at the scriptures that tell me to live every day as if it's about to happen. So every morning I wake up. Oh, I'm still here? Hmm. I wonder if it'll happen today. And I find myself focused on him. That's peace. Peace and knowing no matter what, we've already won because Christ won. The title of Psalm 3 that we're going to pray this morning is the Lord helps his troubled people. Now, of course, when you read these, you know that he's talking about Israel. When you look a little deeper, you see he's speaking to the Gentiles too, the church. It's underlying, but it's there. Some Psalms, it's way more evident than others. But he is our help too. And he knows what we're going through. And he will help us through everything. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to sing praises to your holy name. To lift you up, to raise our hands to you as our Father in heaven. Thank you, Father, for giving us life. Thank you for giving us the, the this life, the life that we live now. Thank you for presenting to us the gifts and the blessings that you've presented to us, the loved ones in our lives that have kept us on track, that have led us, you've used them to lead us into truth and to lead us to where we are now. Thank you for offering us salvation and for making it as easy as possible for us to accept. 
Thank you for opening our eyes to see it and accept it. Thank you for opening our hearts to receive it. Thank you for leading us into study in our, into your word so that when we know these things, your peace that defies all understanding comes. We live in a world we don't belong in. And you, like Psalm 3 says, you help us through that time frame. You help us through that life to make it through those tribulations. To make it through the process of training that we're going through to prepare us for eternity. To bring us to a place where we please you. A place of faith. A place of trust. A place of leaning on you for everything. And relying on you for everything. A place where we no longer look to the world. We look to you. And ultimately, that day of redemption that everyone now is waiting for. Thank you, Father, for the many wonderful blessings you've poured out. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to pay for our sins. Father, we sin so much, and we and most of the time we don't even realize it. On those sins we don't see, those sins that we don't realize, those thoughts that we forget about, Father, please have mercy on us and forgive us those things. Because this flesh is constantly fighting us. This world is constantly dragging us in every direction possible. It comes down to separating from the world and saying no. Because there's so much trouble. And it's so hard to, to operate. And sometimes it's so hard just to keep your tongue. Because you want to tell people, what is the matter with you? Do you not know that God is watching you right now? You're in danger. I find myself where I want to shake people. Wake up. Father, you have done such an amazing thing in that you have created a, a holding area of faith. You've, you've created this bubble. It's a sheepfold. And when we come to faith, you lead us there. And we stand in that sheepfold. And in that sheepfold is the most amazing peace. Peace through pain. Peace through tribulation. Peace through trouble. Peace through living in a place we don't belong. Living in a world that won't accept us. And that peace comes from you. It comes from the knowledge of what's next. Father, help us stay strong and stay focused. And help us keep looking towards that light. To stay in your word, in the world that doesn't want us to believe your word is true. Like that nonsense yesterday. How can somebody say that when the very book they say is an idol is the book on how they found out about you and about Jesus and about their salvation? This is the problem we have today. People don't want your word to be true. And they are going through great lengths to try to shut that down. And it's unfortunate that it seems most people are going that direction. But Father, you've seen, they, they ask me, they ask many, why don't I have peace in my life? And it comes down to one reason. We're living after the flesh and the world, not after you, not after the Spirit. Father, help us find this, this niche that we can live in, and where we're living in the Spirit, where we're walking after you, walking in truth, walking in faith and in trust. Because that is where peace is. Knowing what's coming, knowing what the possibilities are, and being okay with it, that's peace. I know of a hundred possibilities that can run through my head right now of what could happen today concerning me because I'm a Christian. I'm at peace with it. Because I know that you always make a way. You always make an avenue. You always make a possibility. And you have such amazing mercy on us. Thank you for your mercy, Father. Thank you for your grace. 
And thank you for your wonderful salvation that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on the cross. Psalm 3. The Lord helps his troubled people. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say to me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. How many times have I heard that statement? <laughs> but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O oh Lord, save me, O oh my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. Father, this is a psalm of trust. Verse 5, I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. It's us putting our trust in you. Every night when we go to bed, every morning when we wake up, putting our trust in you. I know what the possibilities are while I'm sleeping. I know what the possibilities are while I awake. I trust you. I know the rapture could happen while I'm sleeping. Jesus said two will be laying in a bed. One will be taken, one will be left. That's people sleeping. And I trust that I won't be left. You will not leave those who belong to you. This is, you said this. And we trust you for that. Thank you, Father, for this incredible revelation and to how to find this peace that in this world where we don't belong, in this life that seems like it goes on and on and on forever, we have peace. And the only place we find it is in you. The only place where we know we stand, we know we have a chance, where we know there's hope is in you. In this world, there is no hope. People spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every week on lottery, hoping that they're going to win. And there's no hope. They're hoping and there's no hope. And when somebody does win, where's the hope? So they've got a few years of good living with no worry of money. I don't worry about money. When I stopped worrying about money, you provided everything I needed. Still, still doing it. We live so much for the flesh because we think we have to have this and we think we have to have that. People think they have to have the best shoe, the best pants, the best shirt. What did Jesus say? Life is more than food and clothing. Do not worry about those things. Your father knows you have need of them. He will provide them. Father, I know you will provide them. You have provided them. You have provided them. You have provided everything. I have no complaints. I hear people complain. I hear people look at three freezers full of food and a pantry full of food and say, there's nothing to eat. Stuff in the fridge goes bad because they buy it but won't eat it. I feel like I'm richer than I've ever been in my life. Because it's all because of you. And when I stopped worrying and put my trust in you, that peace came. That peace of whatever happens, happens. We'll work through it. And you've been showing me all my life that, that truth. I've had that trust all my life. It's amazing. My wife used to get so mad at me. We don't have any money. 
How are we going to make it? I said, just trust. The Lord will provide everything we need. And you did every single time. In fact, we talked about this recently. Because we were having a conversation with someone else. And she I, she said, it used to make me so mad. I'm like, yep. I said, but what happened? And she had to admit. She had to verbally admit. He provided every time. We always had what we needed. Exactly. Father, that's you. I can give glory to you for that and praise you for that because every single time, I cannot remember a time where you didn't provide us exactly what we needed, exactly when we needed it. From when I was a kid all the way up, you have always been there. Why would I doubt now? Now, I have more experience. I have more life experience. The chance for worry is much higher when you're older. But every day you renew me to make sure I'm still in peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my great King of the universe. Thank you. Please give us strength to make it to the end. So many are worried now. So many are caught up in the world. Father, help us separate from this world and to stand and look at you instead. Because in you we have hope. In you we have trust. In you we have peace. Help us keep our eyes watching for our Lord Jesus Christ to come and to remove us from this place. In him we have salvation. In him we have peace. In him we have love and trust. It's a full package. And, and the amazing promise that we have is within us. The Holy Spirit, the seal of promise. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everything you do. And that reminds us of these promises. Father, help us to stay more focused on you than we ever have. This world can burn. Let, help us to stop focus, focusing on this world and to focus on you because you are where it all is. You are my hope. You are my salvation. You are my truth. You are my world. You are my everything. I'm merely visiting here, wasting time until it's time to go. I feel like I'm sitting in a doctor's reception room, just waiting to go. But I'll wait as long as it takes, because you're worth it. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for putting this in my heart. And I pray you do this to my brothers and sisters. Do worries come up? Absolutely. Do concerns come up? Absolutely. But at the same time they come up, you show me whether I can positively affect them or not. And if I can positively affect them, I do. And if I can't, I don't. Most of my mobility and, and, and ability to do things because there's so much pain has been taken away. But I'm able to do more now than I ever have. And it's all because of you. You get all the credit. You get all the glory. You get all the praise. Thank you, Father, for everything that you are doing for us, you've done for us, and you are about to do for us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. When I get into those prayers like that, as I'm going, when I pause, it's because the Holy Spirit is recalling memories from the past. And I'm remembering as a kid, and it's so weird, and knowing the truth. I'm remembering, you know, when I was younger, knowing the truth. God did provide this for us. God did it. And I, it all, it's like I, I can think back as far as I can think back. I've always known. It's weird. And then it brings me up to whenever I got saved in Corpus Christi and how it happened. And it was so weird. I still can't explain it. But I've always known. I still don't know what that means and whether that has significance. I'm trying to figure it out. But I know eventually the Lord's going to show me. We'll see. Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it was just the life that I led. I don't know. 
Or maybe it was something more. I don't know. But I know the Lord has a plan for each and every one of us. I'm just waiting for what, what's going to happen with, with mine. Patiently, hopefully, just going to wait until it's time to move. Until it's time to do something and time to act. And that's when he will activate. We're like sleeper cells. When the time comes, he activates us. So trust in him, guys. If your life seems like it's going stale, that's okay. Hope in him. Just live. Enjoy the peace. Enjoy the quiet while you have it. Because it could change within an hour. Everything could be great. And then everything can be terrible. That happened to us in Iraq. When they decided they were going to do a Wizard of Oz Christmas. And I was at the point where, and when we had just got there in August, I was at the point already where I didn't want to go anywhere where there was mass groups of people. And they were all out there having a good old time. I could hear them from my chew a couple hundred yards away. And then in a second, they weren't having a wonderful time. As a mortar round goes through the back room of the kitchen, luckily it was a small one, it wipes out the entire back room and runs everybody out into the bunkers. Then they weren't having a good time. I've seen with my own eyes how quickly things can change, how fast. One minute, you are completely in control, and the next minute, they're hauling you off. When you get to see that, when you get to see how quick life can end, it's just a nanosecond. It changes your perspective on a lot of things. And it helps you to not worry about a lot of things. Because you realize just how little control you really have. Let go of that control and give it over to Him. Let Him have the control. Because God will never steer you wrong. He will never put you somewhere you don't belong. He'll never put you somewhere without preparing you. That's walking in the Spirit also. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Be wary. Satan is pulling out all the stops. He is doing everything he can to stop each and every one of us from worshiping God and from proclaiming the truth. Be careful. Because you never know who you're listening to. And that includes me. You never know who you're listening to could suddenly change because he got to them. I don't want him to get to me and I'm really working hard to make sure that I stay on the same path. But don't trust humans. Trust God. Trust his word. That's the truth. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I will see you in the next video.